So recently, I built this Ordo Kronos Inquisitor. As I had an incredible amount of fun in building this guy, and fleshing out an Ordo which has no official models, and very little background information, I thought I would build upon this conversion and create its retinue. I'm Pete the Wargamer, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to create an Ordo Kronos Acolyte. The Inquisitor's henchmen, in their latest role in Carnation, have been simplified down to simply being Acolytes. However, that doesn't mean that we can't craft models to represent this myriad of helpers, servants, and general hangers-on. So, I wanted to start my warband off with an apprentice, a junior inquisitor in training, and this led me to use the Palanite Enforcers kit as this model's basis. The armor is very similar to the Subjugator armor that I used in my Inquisitor guide, but it is much more lightweight and helps to convey that this model is linked to our Inquisitor albeit at a lower point in the hierarchy. I began by removing the components required to build the torso and the legs from that kit, before cleaning and assembling them all together. This gave me the starting point for my conversion. I wanted to give my acolyte the appearance of a pistol-toting gunslinger, so needed two human-sized arms carrying pistols. Once again, the Necromunda range provided me with an excellent choice of pistol carrying left and right arms. I chose a pair that had one held upwards and the other being aimed out towards the side. And both of these arms were sourced from the House Orlock Gang Kit. The right arm was attached with no issue and fitted nicely into the shoulder cavity of the Palanite torso with just a little glue. The left arm, however, proved to be a bit trickier and it wouldn't quite fit when taken straight from the sprue. So I needed to make some small changes using my knife to the shoulder of the arm. The trick here is to take your time. Don't try to cut too much off in one go. Making small cuts not only reduces your chances of cutting yourself, it also means that you can periodically check the fit of the piece to see where your next cuts need to be made. Once you have sufficiently trimmed the arm enough so that it fits into the socket, you can glue this arm in place too. With the arms in place, the next step was to add the head. As I had already dipped into the house Orlock sprue for the arms, it made sense to grab one of the heads from that kit also. However, the problem here lay in the neck joint from the Palanite Enforcer kit. The head already had a ball joint, which would not only look far too tall against the existing neck, but it also wouldn't give me a sufficient surface to glue. To make room for the neck joint that was attached to the head, I needed to trim the neck from the enforcer part that was slightly protruding. I began with some clippers to remove the areas that I could easily access with them. This was then trimmed back further with a knife, making small cuts as I did so, being careful to not to damage my own fingers as well as the collar. Once I was satisfied with how much of the neck I had removed, I still needed to make adjustments to the head. The rounded bottom of the head needed to be trimmed slightly to achieve the correct length, as well as flattening it out to ensure I had a good bond when I glued the head into place. I positioned the head so that it followed the line of the left arm, which, when coupled with the torso position, gave me a very dynamic looking miniature. So far, I have the basic structure of my model completed, but he is lacking anything which indicates him to be a part of the Ordo Kronos. So, to give him a little time travel flair, I opted to grab a skeleton and have it strapped to his back. My reasoning here is that these remains belong to his master, who is still alive, at least at this point in time. In my head, I see the Inquisitor having been present at his own death at some point in his own future, and being a powerful psyker, he is able to use his own mortal remains to enhance his abilities and so he keeps them around. However, as lugging around half a skeleton is a little below the Inquisitor's rank, this task falls to his apprentice. So I grabbed one of the skeleton torsos from the Age of Sigmar skeleton kit, along with a head and a couple of arms. To attach the skeleton to the back of the Acolyte, I needed some sort of bracket, and the U-shaped tip of the Sakarian Infiltrator's taser goads are perfect for this. So I began by clipping away the tip of the taser goad with my clippers, cutting just at the ends of the rods. I then proceeded to clean this cut up with my knife to create a smoother surface ready for gluing. 
Now as this bracket and attached skeleton would protrude quite a bit from the body, it needed to be securely attached and the contact point wouldn't be quite strong enough for this task. So I decided to pin the bracket into place. I began by drilling a hole into the bracket with my one millimeter drill bit, drilling in a couple of millimeters. This was then repeated on the torso, drilling into the center of one of the back plates. The torso has a cavity, so just drill until you stop feeling any resistance and use the same drill bit as before. Next, I took some one millimeter thick steel wire. This was then super glued into the bracket before being left to dry. The protruding wire was then clipped, leaving a few millimeters protruding out of the end. I tested the fit against the torso to work out just how much extra wire was needed to be removed. I made another cut with my clippers before super gluing it into the hole in the torso. And with that, the bracket was securely in place. The next important step was to assemble the skeleton. I began with the torso and the head. It was important to use one of the helmetless heads here, but you could opt to use one of those found within the Citadel skull set instead of the skeleton set. With the head in place, next came the arms. For the right arm, I began with a sword carrying arm and using my knife, I then proceeded to cut away the sword from the top and bottom of the fist, trying to get as close as possible to the hand without damaging it. With the sword removed, I could clean up the cut with my knife. For the left arm, I had a similar issue of the arm not being purely skeletal. Ultimately, I decided to cut away at the elbow. As it also had no legs either, it made sense that part of the arm would be missing. No doubt these were both blasted away by whatever ended the Inquisitor's life in the future. With my knife, I made a few cuts at the elbow to remove the lower arm whilst keeping the upper arm intact. Finally, I made a few trims to clean up the cut. These arms were then glued to the torso before the skeleton was glued into the bracket. I placed the hook around the neck with the skeleton facing outwards. You might need to carefully bend out the hooks to get it to fit properly, but only a little adjusting should be needed here. Now that I had something to indicate this miniature's affiliation, I could concentrate on bulking out his equipment. First, I chose two of the holstered pistols from the Palanite Enforcer kit. Luckily, there are a good number available in this kit with both left and right facing pieces. One of these was added to each side of the acolyte's waist to further enhance that gunslinger appearance. In addition to this, extra pouches were also glued into place at the rear of the model as well. Finally, we needed some purity seals and an hourglass, the symbol of the Ordo Kronos, at least by my reckoning anyway. The hourglass was taken from the Free Guild Flagellant set and was fixed to the back of the model, whereas the purity seal, taken from a Space Marine kit, was attached to the skeleton. My reasoning here was that, as it is some sort of psychic conduit, it would need some protection from being corrupted or possessed by the ruinous powers. The acolyte, on the other hand, is much more replaceable, so didn't need one himself. And so, with these final details added, I could go about basing and painting this acolyte to match the Inquisitor, which left me with this. So here we have the completed Ordo Kronos acolyte. Much like the Inquisitor, I opted for a blue color scheme for this model. I see this as being the official color of this Ordo, and so it will be featured again as I expand my retinue. Plus the Taurus is blue, so there's a nice reference to Doctor Who thrown in there as well. The Hourglass uses the same OSL methods that I demonstrated on my Inquisitor, as well as in my Plasma Glow tutorial, which you can find a link to in the description if you're interested in recreating it yourself. Once again, being given the opportunity to be a little more creative was great fun, and I will be building out this retinue in future videos, so please do subscribe if you'd like to see more. If you're looking to create your own acolytes, even if you're not following this guide to the letter, Hopefully I've given you a few tips or ideas that you can incorporate into your own kit bashes. I just want to say a big thank you to all of you who support my channel. While normally Patreon is the best place to help me out, I've recently set up a buy me a coffee, which generally seems much easier to use from a supporter perspective. 
There you can offer monthly support, just like Patreon, or you can just make a one-off donation to help me buy all the bits that I use for these videos. And you can find a link to that in the description below. If you're looking to recreate this miniature, then to source your extra bits, head on over to Bitsbox. However, if it's full kits that you're looking for, then be sure to check out Firestorm Games. Links to both of these can be found in the description below. And so until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.